slightly awkward question alert. If you had a vintage vase, would you spray paint it? You're going to say no, aren't you? Especially when I tell you that the back stamp says Susie Cooper. Hello and welcome, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. I thought I would bring you my flower arranging thrift haul and show you how I'm going to make over some of these pieces, which includes my vintage Susie Cooper vase. And as you can see, it's already had one makeover. So you're going to be asking me, Julie, why did you make over a vase which has got a sign designer's name on the bottom of it? It says Susie Cooper, Cran Works, Burslem, England. This vase, originally yellow, was from the low Flemish range. Well, the reason I painted it originally was because once I had arranged flowers in it, I discovered that the vase leaked. It was sort of a sweaty puddle, and it was really a puddle of water. Fortunately, I had put the vase onto a tray so I didn't spoil my work surfaces. And then when I came to wash the vase, I picked it up by the handle. Now, the vase is quite bulbous and quite heavy, and actually, I've cracked the handle, and I've done a little bit of a repair using, was it hot glue gun? or possibly E6000. And that is the reason why I originally painted it white. And then I decided to use some stamps to create more of a summertime feel for it and added a little bit of aging over the top with some watered down acrylic paint. The only problem is I don't really like it. So what I'm going to do is spray paint it yellow taking it back to what it looked like originally. And I will just need to remember to never ever put fresh flowers in this vase because the vase isn't waterproof. I will be arranging flowers that are either silk, artificial or um, dried flowers. But I will need loads and loads of flowers because the hole, the, the open mouth on the vase is really quite large. So I'm imagining perhaps peonies or large headed garden roses would look absolutely amazing. The paint I chose was called Straw Flower from Rustoleum, so I go out into the garden and give the jug a spray of paint. As you can see, it's reasonably breezy outside and I found it quite difficult to actually get the paint to stick. And also the paint was a bit gunged up in my can, that's why I keep shaking it and turning it upside down. In the end, I took this inside and gave it um, a second and a third coat in my workshop. A recent find as well is this little Scandi inspired scarf, which cost me, I think, three pounds. So I probably won't wear it. I'm not quite so sure that white is my colour, but I have been displaying it in the peg rail on my kitchen, in my kitchen, and it does add a lovely seasonal vibe to my kitchen. So it's a sort of nod to Christmas. Actually, I did buy a red and white scarf a while ago, which I've now subsequently donated back to the charity shop because I prefer this one. But it does give a lovely sort of wintry vibe. And if I go out into the garden and I've forgotten my scarf, I can just grab that before I head out of the back door. Next up is a pair of candlesticks. And these I did buy quite a while ago. The sticker on them says two pounds a pair. And I've never used them. I don't really like the wood effect on them. And I'm thinking, as I'm getting my spray paint out for my jug, that perhaps I should spray paint these as well. And I'm just wondering whether I can prise out the little metal candle cup in the top um, so I don't spoil that. And I might have to see whether I need to cover up the felt bottoms just so I don't get any overspray. But perhaps if I set them up on a little wooden block and spray around them, hopefully that spray won't reach the underside. And of course you need candles to go in your candlesticks. And I found a pack of candles originally from the supermarket for £1.50, six candles for £1.50. They're quite short, but I thought now was the time to use them. And I think if I paint this candlestick in the pale yellow or perhaps a pale green, it'll sort of lead me on to springtime vibes. Just a word of warning, those little metal candle cups took a little bit of easing out. It wasn't quite as fast as the video seems to make out. And once they were out, I gave the candlesticks a little bit of a light standing. They had a very glossy varnish finish on the end. And then I'm using Rustoleum paint in 
green apple or apple green, I can't quite remember which way around it is, and give very light coats because I don't want any dribbles. I want a really nice, lovely, smooth finish here. And um, as you can see, working outside, there was a little bit of a slippage there, but I did rescue the situation without smearing the paint. And just like when I spray painted the jug, I ended up giving a second coat to these candlesticks, but this time I took them indoors to my workshop. And I actually lay them down flat and sprayed them in, in thirds and just rolled them over as the paint dried. You'll be pleased to know I'm not going to paint this. So I picked up this, it looks like a little jug, and on the bottom it says Romania. And I picked this up in the thrift shop in town. It was two pounds and um, a little uh, ceramic ware pot, which is actually a candlestick holder. So with those white candles, I thought that would look really good. And I am thinking, obviously spring is around the corner, but we are in winter. I'm going to live in the moment. And I thought with my white scarf with the dark navy blue and black detail and this, it would create a nice little wintry feel. And what I like to do is to, um, keep a candle on my kitchen windowsill. So when I come downstairs in the mornings and it's still dark, I like to light a candle and take a moment as the kettle boils, just to think and have a look out into the garden. And I really like the shape of this. It's almost like it's a Victorian lady with her crinoline dress. And it's got some lovely detail on it actually, yeah, a sort of paintwork in a slight gloss. So the whole candlestick is matte, but it does have a slight gloss detail on it. I've just recently been charity shopping in Ramsgate. So Ramsgate sits on the channel and is about 20 miles or so from France. So on a clear day, you can see to France, but of course the day I went, it was drizzly and overcast. I absolutely love dories and I've seen a video here on YouTube and if I can find it, I will try and link it, of a lady who made a dory featuring, instead of natural plant materials, little decorative plates. And I've been thinking, perhaps I should do the same thing. And what's inspired me is I have a Jasperware saucer that belonged to my mum, and I don't really like it. But I thought if I could put it into something else, reuse it for another purpose, I would be able to enjoy it on a daily basis. So here, to add to my collection, it's not Jasperware, but they are mini little saucers with floral details on it. This one, rather annoyingly, has got the price label right over the flowers. I paid £1.50 for that one. And £1.50 for this one, which has got daffodils and periwinkle on it. So I'm going to go with a whitish, bluish, yellowish theme, trying to keep the plates I collect over the coming year vaguely in the same colour palette. I've bought myself another jug. Now, you may feel... Now, if you know me, you may think my home is overrun with flower arranging vases and containers, but it's not because I am really, really good at decluttering. So I will buy a vase to feature in a YouTube video or to feature for a, a DIY or an upcycle, one that I really want to use, one of something I want to use in one of my classes. But when I get fed up with it, or just when my cupboards need emptying a bit so I can go out and, and satisfy my thrifting itch, I do pass my vases on. So sometimes they go back to the charity shop and, in fa and sometimes I sell them on Facebook live sales, gift them to friends, that kind of thing. And what I do have to remember is, I, what I do try and remember is what I've got. So I'm not buying multiples. There was one year when I came to count all my white vases and about 27 of them. And I had a massive colour of them, just keeping the more classic shapes. Now I'd forgotten what colour this was. I thought it was green, but I have bought this lovely blue vase. It looks like a sort of cafe ware vase and stamped on the bottom, it says Iris Woods Ware. Now wood, I, I have quite, I have several pieces from Woods, Arthur Woods, and I wonder whether that's the same factory or maker. I like the, the little ridge detail that it's got on the front. Again, quite an open mouth, but I'm imagining that as an informal jug, springs around the corner, it's a beautiful spring colour, and I'll be tumbling daffodils and tulips in it and making it look really, really beautiful. 
And if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I've been inspired by Lisa at Farmhouse on Boone and Sarah from She Holds Dealey to investigate red transfer wear. And I've got quite a little collection. I'm trying to keep it small. I don't want to get carried away of plates I've got. I can see them hanging on my wall and also plates I used at Christmas time. And I am being more discerning now of what, of what I buy. I'm particularly drawn to the Enoch Woods pattern. And there's another pattern as well. I can't quite remember what that's called. And consequently, when I saw this little red transfer wear container, I thought, should I buy it? Because it's Johnson Brothers and that's not a maker that I'm collecting. And what did it for me? was it was in the sale. So originally three pounds, half price at one pound 50. And I thought this would make a really good addition to my little set that I've got. Either I could use it as a, you know, a gravy boat or for cream or milk, but probably I will plant that up next Christmas with some indoor spring flowering bulbs. <laughs> I've kept these things wrapped up and it's not until I pick them up and feel the weight I can actually remember what's inside. This is a vintage glass flower frog. It's got straight sides, it's slightly dirty and a slightly rounded top to it and it was two pounds. I'll be filming a video shortly on how to arrange flowers using a vintage flower frog. If you're watching this video in the future, I will leave a card for it up above so you can easily click through and watch it. And you know when you've watched too much YouTube, don't you? When you are suddenly looking for things that you see some of your favourite YouTubers displaying. So I'm pretty sure that Jane from the Second Hand Gem quite often picks up these silver trays and paints them white and then wet distresses them to bring back some of the original colour. So I have decided to buy one of these little silvery trays. It's got a little pattern on the bottom and cut out details around the side. And I paid £2.50 for this. So we'll have to see whether I actually do go ahead and paint it. But what I do find really helpful with trays is if you're arranging flowers on the table or you're collecting, putting together a little vignette to put on your coffee table or your kitchen table, you can easily pick everything up in one go and move it when it's in the way. So I will be styling this up with my little collection of bits and bobs that I have been buying lately. Well, perhaps not exactly like this, but you get the idea. And just making sure I actually use it. And if I decide that really, perhaps my head was swayed by other people using trays that look really good in their homes, of course, I can always donate it back to the charity shop. I was rather pleased how this little vignette on this tray worked out. I think part of the success is having three main components and keeping the colours quite similar in tone. So the soft pastels, blue, the yellow and the green. And of course a lovely bit of candlelight just to see us through these winter months until the hint of spring with that flowering hyacinth comes round. So I hope you enjoyed my thrift haul with that little flower arranging edge to it. And let me know in the comments what you liked best out of all the items I bought. And what do you think I should have done with the Susie Cooper jug? Just not touched it in the beginning at all. The only problem was, as I said at the beginning of the video, is I discovered that the jug leaked and also I cracked the handle when I was washing it up. That's all for me for now and I'll catch up with you next time.